I think it it is better. Uh, less. Uh, so uh, the reconstruction is that you have y r of j omega as I wrote earlier is equal to x r oh, sorry y i of j omega multiply by h r of j omega okay okay I'm giving two three minutes uh, so so in uh, time domain it is y r of t is equal to y i of t convolve with h r of t and this uh, our reconstruction filter which looks like this in frequency domain if you take its inverse Fourier transform we know that inverse Fourier transform is a sink so it will look like a sink a sink a sink which passes through zeros at every sampling frequency. So this is the same. Okay. And what is I? I is the signal where you have put the time back. So this is your reconstruction uh, where the time has been put back into your sequences. So the only difference between that and this is that you have at the value of the signal. So this is y of capital T, this is y of 2t, this is y of 0. So these values are there. And somehow with some magic, so this really is magic, which is an in frequency domain, you can't see what is happening um, in time domain. What, how do I get this information back? How do I get this information back, this information back? So it's, it's a lot of information, which I dropped all this information while I was converting this signal to a digital signal. And now with some magic, I want this, this information to be precisely come back as it was in the original signal. If I have not done any signal processing, I want my signal to be perfectly reconstructed, okay? <clears throat> so uh, as, uh, as we know in mathematics, we do interpolation, that any value which we don't know, uh, we can do interpolation. And the simplest interpolation is a linear interpolation, that you put a linear straight line here, uh, a line between two points. And we know that this is not really uh, what we originally have. Uh, so a linear interpolator <coughs> will distort uh, the signal so we will we will not be able to reconstruct our signal so it means that we need an interpolator and then you must have learned about uh, a quadratic interpolator cubic interpolator a cubic interpolator is an interpolator where you put a, uh, a raised to the power 3 function like a, um, uh, a cubic function 
uh, between uh, these points and you try to uh, so so people may uh, use uh, different types of interpolator uh, to reconstruct this information uh, but our interpolator is this this is very interesting our interpolator is a sync function not a straight line a sync function means that once i am convolving my sync this uh, this sync with the strain of impulses uh, and if you remember that once you convolve a function with an impulse impulse goes away and copy of the function is you get a copy of the function at the location of the impulse so once you make a copy here so you have this thing okay. and this goes away and once you have us here so you get a copy of the function it goes away <coughs> similarly here you have copy of the function so it goes away and everywhere <coughs> you are going to have a copy of the the interesting part is that you have this is the only value you have this is the only value you have this is the only value you have and you are trying to reconstruct in between so a sink at this location okay will have the same amplitude and they will be theoretically infinite many sinks and all of them will be passing through zero at this location so they will not corrupt uh, the value this value which you have actually this is the exact value you have so the value you have will not be corrupted and rest of the values will be generated through infinite many things which are adding up together uh, to give you the original value of the function so i'll show you a matlab simulation as well uh, which kind of demonstrate the same so <clears throat> so the reconstruction process uh, in frequency domain is very easy to comprehend that you pass it through a reconstruction filter it will only keep one copy studying the same process in time domain is a bit complicated uh, because here you need to comprehend that you are convolving uh, a sink uh, with a train of impulses train of impulses are going to go away and you are going to get infinite many sinks which together uh, generate your function this is what is happening in theory and in actual what happens i have already told you uh, that there is a smoothing filter because you have a sample and hold uh, that you once you are throwing out samples uh, you hold them for some time so this sample once you throw you hold them some time then this sample once you throw you hold it for this time this sample you throw you hold it for this time this you hold it for this time you hold it for this time so this is how the actual d2a converter works that uh, you throw a sample and you hold it for some time and then you pass it through an analog low pass filter uh, which is a smoothing filter so what it does is it smooths out your signal and in that smoothing you almost get uh, uh, a signal which is similar to the signal which you sampled so uh, this is important the reconstruction is an important aspect of signal processing um, so if we put these two together so putting them together uh, we have a c to d a c to d converter which is modeled like this impulse two sequence let's say we are not performing any signal processing then you have sequence to impulse then we have reconstruction okay so here is our c to d and here is our reconstruction chip here is our D to C. So this is the whole process of analog to digital and digital to analog conversion. 
Now there is another important aspect in signal processing, uh, a, a complete whole subject in signal processing which is called multi-rate signal processing. Multi-rate signal processing. What is multi-rate signal processing? Uh, multi-rate signal processing only means that in your digital signal processing system, and as as you know that a digital signal processing system is nothing but algorithms. Uh, all the operations you are performing on your signal. Okay, so you have this digital signal x of n, and you ge you generate y of n. For example, I give you an example of a communication receiver. A communication even a transmitter, communication transmitter or a receiver, let's say a transmitter. A transmitter takes voice, so this is your voice, you are talking, let's say an FM radio. Okay, it captures your voice that you are talking or even, you know, so anything which is basically, is just taking your voice. And voice usually is sampled at 8 kilohertz, okay. 8 kilohertz is the sampling rate but let's say I have this channel which is 99 megahertz so once I am going to transmit this signal it has to be at 99 megahertz okay if I look at this spectrum of the voice the spectrum will look like something like this but maximum frequency is going to be at 4 kilohertz this is the spectrum of the signal so this is the spectrum of the signal, okay? And once I transmit, the spectrum will look like this. At 99 megahertz, I would have this spectrum, okay? The Nyquist says that in order to capture four kilohertz, you got to have twice the, twice the maximum frequency. You got to sample <coughs> at twice the maximum frequency. The maximum frequency is four kilohertz, so, Sampling at 8 kilohertz is okay, but here your your maximum frequency is 99 point uh, whatever is 4 uh, 404. Okay, this is your uh, in megahertz. Okay, in kilohertz it is 9904 kilohertz. This is your maximum highest frequency. So if you got to obey Nyquist, your sampling rate got to be twice this, which is uh, uh, 99 into two, whatever, let's say under 200, around, around uh, uh, 200 megahertz. Okay, not exactly a little less, but around 200 megahertz. So samples here, you have only 8,000 samples per second. And once you are at the end of your in signal processing system, where you are just going to throw these samples uh, to a, a DA to a converter, your sampling rate is going to go up by many, 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 many factors. It is 200,000 kilohertz or mega kilo, yeah. So 200,000, as you see, 8,000 versus 200,000. So it means that your sampling rate in your system is not going to remain the same. Initial processing, you're doing your voice, you are cleaning the noise from the voice samples. Uh, yes, it will remain, it will be at um, uh, 8 kilohertz. Uh, then you are doing FM modulation because it's an FM radio. Your sampling rate will go up. Then you will be mixing it with a 99 megahertz cosine. And 99 mag mixing it with a 99 megahertz cosine, you got to bring your sampling rate to a higher value, uh, and only then you can multiply the two signals and then uh, you transmit. And same happens at the receiver. At the receiver, you are receiving a signal which is at 99 megahertz. Uh, so it has to be sampled at twice the maximum frequency. But once you are playing it on the speaker, it is only a 4 kilohertz signal which is sampled at 8 kilo samples per second so in this whole process uh, you got to systematically increase your sampling rate at the transmitter so that you get to the very very high number of samples and at the receiver you go down from very high number of samples to very low 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 low, low number of samples and then you play that signal so multi-rate signal processing uh, is uh, 
very important concept uh, both in communication and pattern recognition and I'll be telling you why it is important in pattern recognition, machine learning, uh, deep nets, deep neural networks. Uh, so every, uh, every of these applications requires you to have knowledge of multi layer signal processing. Okay, As I mentioned that deep learning also uses uh, these concepts because you have an image and once you are moving towards uh, a hidden hidden uh, or uh, uh, the, the final layers of the neural network uh, you keep uh, decreasing uh, or down sampling your images though you create many but each image is a very very down sample version of your original image so so this is these are uh, very core concepts <coughs> on the onset uh, it looks very simple uh, that if you have a signal let's first learn about down sampling down sampling usually it is symbolically this is how you uh, draw down sampling by d this is your down sampling okay so you have a signal x of n and you have a down version of the signal n down sampling simply means that you throw away samples okay so you have This is and this also is true for images as well. Down sampling, you can down sample an image, and you can down sample a one dimensional signal as well. So let's say you are down sampling by three. So uh, this is how you write a down sampler by three operation down sample by three. Okay, as I mentioned, it's a very simple operation. <coughs> All you have to do is down sample by three means you keep every third sample, so you drop two samples. In this case, you keep this, you drop these two, 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 you keep this. Okay? And once you draw this, it is going to be this sample and this sample and this sample and this sample and this sample. Okay? Very easy. In time domain. And yet we don't know what is happening in frequency domain. <clears throat> because in learning about sampling uh, we keep uh, going back and forth that this is what is happening in time domain and please I've seen many students they mix frequency and time domain please never ever mix uh, the frequency and the, these two concepts never mix these two concepts okay uh, time domain is very simple to comprehend in, in terms of decimation that you're only throwing away samples if it is an image Okay, you throw away every other pixel, two pixels, keep one pixel, throw two, keep one, throw two, keep one, throw two. <coughs> so obviously, uh, you are going to reduce the size of your image by a factor of three. Okay, so this is uh, what down sampling is. So this is what down sampling is that you are uh, reducing uh, the sampling rate. But <coughs> as you can basically perceive uh, that uh, by doing down sampling, uh, you are losing information. And why, why would you ever do this to your signal that if you have captured it correctly, for example, you have a signal, you capture the sinusoid, you capture the sinusoid, okay, and you throw away every other sample. And once you throw away every other sample, you are left with this. Which is no more a sinusoid. So you lose uh, the most important information from your signal that your sinusoid now will appear like a DC signal. So why would you ever, why would you ever like to decimate? And we don't like to decimate. So answer is, oh, we don't want to decimate. You would only decimate if you have redundant samples in your signal. Otherwise, you will never, never, ever decimate. Decimation means that you are inducing noise into your signal it simply means that uh, you are no more obeying nyquist though once you sample your signal you obey nyquist and then digitally you are corrupting your signal making it a garbage which you never do okay uh, so the only reason <coughs> of down sampling is that in a signal processing system we don't want to keep 
extra information because that is a cost to your signal processing system that means more memory uh, that means more power uh, that means more processing and you are just doing a, a, a lot of uh, redundant uh, processing for example if you have a sinusoid okay and for some reason instead of having two samples you have 10 samples Though they look very nice once you plot them and you will be very happy to see a sinusoid which looks like a sinusoid, okay? So you'll be very happy to see this. You say, oh yeah, it looks like sinusoid. On the other hand, if I plot it like this, you say, I don't see a sinusoid in this, okay? So this does not shape into a sinusoid visually. So you don't like this. You, you like to see your sinusoid like this, okay? And if you have not learned uh, signal processing, you perhaps may prefer uh, to keep your signal like this, which gives you, you know, the exact shape of the signal. Though the Nyquist is telling you this is enough, you don't need to do this. Okay? And let's say now you are doing convolution. If you are doing convolution, instead of two samples, you got to convolve with 10 samples. 10 samples means that uh, you are doing five times more redundant uh, computation for maybe you are computing FFTs or whatever algorithm you are using to process this signal. Uh, you should have used this signal instead of this signal. So you are wasting a lot of uh, computational power and obviously this signal would require you more samples to store. Uh, so this will be five times more expensive if you measure uh, the cost in terms of dollars and maybe more and dissipate battery, you know, five times faster and this, 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 this. So we are very, very uh, conscious in our signal processing system. Uh, we don't want to keep any piece of redundant information. Uh, if we believe Nyquist, we don't want to keep any redundant amount of information. Whenever there is a situation where there, you know that there is a redundant information, the very first step you do is you throw away that information. Okay, And uh, situations will come, and especially the example which I gave you, uh, that you have an FM receiver, for example. FM receiver is now mixing your signal with a cosine of 99 megahertz uh, in order to digitally generate 99 megahertz you got to have nine let's say 100 keep keep it simple 100 megahertz okay so you got to have 200 mega samples per second so your here a to d converter once you are developing an fm radio at least at least okay and maybe a little more but just to keep the calculation samples uh, you got to at least have 200 mega samples per second because your signal is centered at around 99 or 100 kilohertz so you got to have twice the maximum frequency so you're going to have these many samples and once you look at the spectrum spectrum will look like this so you do a lot of signal processing here and signal processing you multiply it with the cosine uh, filter it out bring the uh, your spectrum back on to, to zero. So this is how, once you do all the processing, the digital signal processing, your spectrum will look like this with the maximum frequency will be at four kilohertz. Because you are starting with 200 mega samples per second. Here, if you have not dropped any sample, after doing all the processing, still your sampling rate would be 200 million samples per second okay something like this where you have a signal and the signal would have instead of having only 8 million 8 kilo samples it will have 200,000 samples and which you would hate uh, to keep so many samples not required so you throw away samples throw away sample so throwing away sampling is important uh, in signal processing but we need to study this in in frequency domain that what is happening in frequency domain because only that will give you a comprehension and that if you are sampling uh, so what happens in uh, frequency domain we just spent five more minutes and then we'll take a break so let's start with an example let's say there is a signal which is one kilohertz for some reason fx is one for some reasons you sample it at 8 kilohertz you should have sampled it at what rate 
टू किलो हर्ट्स बट फॉर सम रीजन ओके यू सैम्पल इट एट एट किलो हर्ट्स वट आर दोज रीजन यूजली दोज रीजन रिलेट्स टू दैट यू हैव अदर फ्रीक्वेंसीज एंड यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड मनी ऑन अ वेरी प्रिसाइज एन अलॉग फिल्टर्स अदर चैनल्स में भी लेट से यू आर यू आर डिवेलपिंग अ केबल रिसीवर और सेटेलाइट रिसीवर और एन एफ एम रेडियो रिसीवर सो इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट फिल्टरिंग आउट योर चैनल ऑफ इंटरेस्ट यू यूज अ क्रूड फिल्टर बिकॉज यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड मनी ऑन एन अलॉग सिस्टम्स एंड यू हैव यू नो फ्राम इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट वन सो दिस इज वन 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 टू थ्री लेट से अबाउट फोर फाइव 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 किलो हर्ट सो यू सैम्पल इट एट एट किलो हर्ट्स दैट इज़ दी ओनली रीजन यू सैम्पल इट एट अ हाई रेट बिकॉज यू नो यू डोंट हैव अ वेरी प्रिसाइज एन अलॉग फिल्टरिंग दो रिड्यूस दडजस्टिंग चैनल्स दीज आर कॉल्ड एडजस्टिंग चैनल्स बट विल नॉट एग्जैक्टली रिमूव दैम सो इंस्टेड ऑफ दे कमिंग बैक एंड एलियस योर and remember if if they are not removed and you sample it at 2 kilohertz these will come back and alias and put garbage into your frequency of interest which you had to uh, to have so you sample it at higher rate this is the only reason people would sample uh, a signal at higher rate and then put a digital filter then put a digital filter like this okay so that digitally you can very easily clean up your spectrum so put a digital filter and clean up your spectrum so in this example you have a signal and we have already learned that 1 kilohertz 1 kilohertz is primarily 2 pi into 1k minus 2 pi into 1k sample at 10 kilohertz so you make copies of this at every 10 kilohertz so we have learned all of this okay last last lecture we did you know a number of examples so you have a copy at 0 at copy at 2 pi into 10 a copy of minus 2 pi into 10k 10k this is omega so once you make copies and again we know what is going to happen a copy here a copy here a copy here and this is uh, the amplitude is going to be 1 over t which is 10k and i told you this frequency knowing this frequency is very important this frequency is always uh, be at uh, 2 pi into 10k 2 pi into 10k minus 0 and this is at this point is 2 pi into 1k and once you discretize this okay so we know uh, that this is always going to fall at 2 pi this is always going to fall at 2 pi but we actually need to figure out this so this is 2 pi into 1k over 10k uh, k k cancels out so this is 2 5 pi by 5 so knowing the dig highest digital frequency is a must this is the highest digital frequency okay the highest knowing the highest digital frequency is a must and we know and i told you earlier as well that this vector will tell you that how much oversampling you have done there now this tells me that you have done uh, an oversampling by a factor of 5 a signal which should have been sampled at 2 kilohertz you have sampled it at 8 kilohertz so now what you do is after cleaning the spectrum let's say this is what you are getting and this is what you have um, and this factor tells you the digital spectrum would tell you that you are keeping five extra samples for every sample so what you do is you just keep one throw away four keep the fifth sample you keep every fifth sample so for a system like this for a system like this you have a continuous to discrete conversion sampling rate is 10k a digital signal this is x of n pass this digital signal through a pi by 5 filter so that uh, once you are out you have very clean spectrum which looks like this pi by 5 minus pi by 5 okay and then you throw away samples 
every five fifth samples you keep. So this is an important step uh, that if there are adjacent channels, so if there are adjacent channels in here, in here, in here, here. So you clean the spectrum and after cleaning the spectrum, so you clean the spectrum by passing it through this filter, digital filter. So that you have this. And as soon as you lose all these uh, garbage, uh, which has not corrupted, then uh, you basically. So let's uh, uh, take a 10 minutes break and uh, we come back after 10 minutes, please. Thank you very much.